Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi. I welcome you to today's biology lesson. And uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the two other components of blood, and that is white blood cells and platelets. So we shall start with the white blood cells, also known as leukocytes. And first of all, uh, these blood cells are formed in the bone marrow of long bones. They are formed in the bone marrow of long bones. Their main function is to defend the body against disease causing microorganisms. There are two types. There are two types. The first type is called granulocytes or phagocytes. And this type is the one that deal with disease causing microorganisms by engulfing. They change their shape to engulf the disease causing microorganism, they digest it and then finally destroy it. So these ones engulf disease causing microorganisms digest and then destroy. Uh, these granulocytes, they move by what is called amoeboid movement. whereby they can change their shape to get into the tissues. That is, if there is an infection in the tissues, they can change their shape so that they can access uh, the tissues where there is an infection. Uh, then uh, we have the second type. And these ones are called agranulocytes. And uh, these ones, they are of two types. They, they are those that are called monocytes and lymphocytes. So these ones deal with disease-causing microorganisms by producing chemical substances called antibodies. So they produce antibodies to deal with disease causing microorganisms. Uh, e.g., they may produce antibodies called antitoxins that neutralize toxins from pathogens or from the disease causing microorganisms. They may produce other antibodies called opsonins that adhere to the surface of pathogens, 
making them easier easier to engulf so it makes the opsonins the opsonins make it easier for the phagocytes to engulf the disease causing microorganisms others are called lysins some antibodies called lysins these ones digest the membranes of pathogens and finally uh, there are others that are called agglutinins and these ones make the pathogens to clump together they make the pathogens to clump together and die then we have the other type of uh, blood cells we have number four the platelets and these ones are responsible for blood clotting to prevent one excessive loss of blood and also to prevent entry of disease causing micro organisms so the next uh, step i will briefly talk about the process of blood clotting the process of blood clotting by the platelets process of blood clotting and we'll summarize it in form of a chart so we have the platelets So what happens is uh, in the process of blood clotting uh, when the platelets are injured so here you can have uh, injured platelets or when the platelets are exposed to the air because of a cut or an injury uh, they release an enzyme that is known as thromboplastin and thromboplastin uh, stimulates the conversion uh, of another protein called prothrombin to thrombin and this one takes place in the presence of vitamin k and calcium ions The thrombin that is formed uh, activates the conversion of a plasma protein called fibrinogen which is soluble and then fibrinogen is converted into fibrin which is insoluble so the fibrin uh, forms a mesh around the wound thus preventing uh, excessive loss of blood and also prevents the entry of disease causing microorganisms so we'll briefly summarize that and this one we are saying that uh, when the tissues are injured 
or platelets exposed to air they release an enzyme called thromboplastin also known as thrombokinase as another name so they release thromboplastin and then this thromboplastin or thrombokinase which one neutralizes the anti clotting factor the anti clotting factor heparin so now the blood can clot so the process of clotting of blood is initiated once the anti clotting factor heparin is neutralized and number 2 uh, activates the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin so that is the other function of the thromboplastin and this activation uh, requires or this occurs in the presence of calcium ions and vitamin K then after that a thrombin that has been formed activates the conversion of activates the conversion of soluble fibrinogen into fibrin conversion of soluble fibrinogen which is a plasma protein into insoluble or fibrin that forms a mesh around the wound so the process of blood clotting is completed and the fibrin closes the wound preventing excessive loss of blood and also preventing disease causing microorganisms from getting in our assignment So the assignment the first question explain how phagocytes A and lymphocytes deal with disease causing microorganisms so you explain separately how phagocytes and lymphocytes uh, deal with disease causing microorganisms and number 2 describe the process of blood clotting in humans as we have explained it so we'll stop there until next time goodbye